Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here at Math and Engineering, and uh, we're going to do a video on the bisection method. This is the third year content numerical analysis course that you take in engineering. And uh, yeah, we, we received a couple uh, requests actually to uh, to make a couple numerical videos. So uh, thanks for those. We always appreciate that. And you know, yeah, like uh, like I said, we're trying to build a community here. So if you ever uh, have any problems or you want some specific content, we'll try our best to facilitate that. With that being said, let's go ahead and let's get started. So we uh, we have a question here. Find a root of x cubed plus 4x squared minus 10 equals 0 on the interval 1, 2 using the bisection method. Use stopping criteria of epsilon s is equal to 5%. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. Essentially what this is is like you have a you have some number like a uh, root here on the x-axis, okay? And then you're going to uh, essentially, okay, you're gonna like find a point here, and then you're gonna go over here, and then you're gonna go over here, and then you're gonna go over here, and essentially you're getting closer and closer and closer to the root by finding the center point between the root and where the point that you're at. And whether or not it's negative or positive, you know whether you're on the left or the right side of the root, okay? So that's kind of like a way of just generally thinking about this, so it makes a little more sense. That's at least how I think about it. So in this blue box, I've written a couple uh, conditions here, and uh, I, I won't go over those yet. Those will make more sense when we get to that point. So let's start with our first iteration, where n equals 1. And we're just going to take our range values, and we're going to plug them in here. Okay, so we put 1 here, and we put 2 here. Okay, so the formula for Cn, okay, that's the midpoint between uh, the, the range that we found here, okay? So, uh, or that we're given, actually. And let's go ahead and write the formula for that. So that is Cn is equal to one-half xl to the n minus one plus xu to the n minus one, okay? So that's the formula that we have for cn, okay? So we're gonna plug that in, so we're gonna end up having uh, three, right? One plus two divided by two, that's equal to 1.5, okay? So then that's what's gonna go in this column here. Perfect, so now we are going to, we have the function here, right? So let's go ahead and let's plug uh, our xl value, xl n minus 1, plug that value into the function and see what we get. Okay, we're going to have 1 plus 4 minus 10, that's going to be negative 5, okay, which is, uh, that's less than 0, okay, and we, uh, uh, let's plug in our cn value, so 1.5 cubed plus 4 uh, times 1.5 cubed. 1.5 squared minus 10, that should give us a value of 2.37570, decimal there. And if we go ahead and plug 2 into this formula here, we are going to get 14. Okay, so, and that's greater than zero. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this blue box, because this is where the blue box, and this is really simple, it's straightforward. I mean, uh, all you really need to do is just kind of memorize these steps, and you're fine, you know, you don't even really need to understand it. So, we have, uh, if f of xl times f of c is less than zero, then we are going to take the cn value and put it in for xu, okay? If xu times fc, so xu, f of xu, Sorry, if f of x u times x c is less than zero, then we're going to put x l in for c. So c, uh, c in f for x l. So we're going to take this 1.5 and we're going to move it to this column. And you'll see, uh, I'll just show you exactly how that is done here. Okay, so if we take a look, right, we have, we have uh, f of x l, right, is negative 5, and we have f of c n is a positive number. So a negative times a positive is going to be a negative. Okay, so let's look for that condition here. So we have f x l times c is less than 0, right? So that, that condition is matched in this scenario here because we have a negative number times a positive. So the product of these two functions is going to be less than 0. So that means we're going to take our c value from the first row and we're going to put it down into here for x, u, n minus 1 in the second iteration. And then this number is just going to come down like that. So that's 1. Okay. And for uh, Epsilon EA, okay, Epsilon EA is going to be the uh, the percent change in the CN values. So that's going to be uh, CN minus CN minus 1 over CN times 100. And that is going to be equal to EA. Okay, so that's how we calculate EA. Uh, EA, there is no CN and CN minus, CN minus 1. That doesn't exist right now because we're on, only on our first iteration. So this is 
uh, NA here. We'll say that's not applicable. Now we just go again, right? And we'll do this one a little bit faster because now we're getting the hang of it, right? So once again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug CN is, you know, it's going to be this plus this divided by two. And that is going to be equal in this case to 1.25. And then we're just going to plug this into the our function here. We're going to plug this into our function. We're going to plug this into a function. We're going to write the results down. And now, as you can see, because XL is the same, all right, in, uh, in this function, F of XL is also going to be the same, right? So uh, we can go ahead and just copy down five here because we know that's going to be the same, right? And because now we put this CN value into XU, right? We know that this number here is going to come down into this column, right? That makes sense. So we're going to have, I'm not even going to write it, but we know that this is going to be greater than zero, right? So this number is going to go down here into this column. And now we are actually going to have a new FCN, right? Because our new, our CN has now changed. So if we plug 1.25 into this function, we should get the value of negative 1.796. Okay, so we have negative 1.796. So now let's go to the blue box and we'll see which condition this satisfies. So if we have f of xu times f of c is less than zero, okay, so if this is a positive number here, right, and this is a negative number, if we multiply fcn times fxu, we are going to get a number less than zero, right, which fulfills the second condition here. So that the second condition is telling us to put a uh, first take our C value and put it into XL in this column. So we're going to go ahead and put that here. Okay, and then we're going to drop this one down. Cool. So I hope that makes sense. And now we can actually evaluate EA, right? So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to take uh, 1.25 minus 1.5, okay, divided by 1.5 times 100, and that should give us a an error of 20%, okay? So uh, we're not there yet, right, because our... We, we stop evaluating, okay, when, I'll just write that up here, when absolute value of ES, okay, is less than EA. That's when we stop, okay, and as we can see, 5% is not less than 20, so we need to keep going. So let's go ahead, this, this uh, plus this divided by 2, that's going to be equal to 1.375. Okay, I'm just going to go a little bit quicker here, right? We know that this value here is going to come over here because we put this CN value into XL. Okay, that's less than zero. Our new F of CN, so plugging this CN into this function will give us 0 0.16270. Okay, and we know that uh, this 1.5 is going to be the same. So uh, we can go ahead and just take this number 2.37570 and we're just going to go ahead and put that down here and that's going to be greater than zero. So, uh, as we can see here, we're, we're taking this negative number and putting it here, right? So a negative times a positive is going to give us a negative zero. So that implies that f of x of l, or f of x sub l, times f of cn is less than zero. That's the first condition, right? So, once again, we go ahead, we take cn, and we put it in for xu. 1.375, and then we just drop 1.25 down. Cool, and uh, well, we need to go ahead and evaluate our EA here. So we have 1.375 minus 1.25 divided by 1.375 times 100. That will give us an estimated error of 9.1%, still greater than 5. So it looks like one more iteration and we're done. Okay, so let's uh, take the average of these two numbers, and I'll just uh, go a little quicker here. This is going to be 1.3125, okay? Uh, once again, we are going to take this number, right? and plug it over here, that's greater than zero, okay? The, our new FCN is going to be negative 0.898, and this number is going to be the same, so, and it is less than zero, okay? So really, it doesn't matter what the number is, all we need to know is that it's either less or greater than zero, and then we're gonna know if we're gonna get a negative or positive number. Okay, so as we can see, we have here negative 0.898, right? That's going to be times a positive number. So F of, C, uh, F of C sub N times F of X sub U. Uh, where do we have that condition? We have it here. That is less than zero because it's going to be negative. So we're going to follow this condition. However, let's go ahead and evaluate EA first. And we will see here... So we can see that if we uh, if we go ahead and evaluate CN here, so we track this from this and divide by this, we're going to get 4.76%.
And uh, as we can see here, so in this case, we have EA is going to be less than ES. Okay, which means we are done. Okay, so well, what are we? Uh, what are we done though? How how do we know what our answer is, right? And that's uh, an important part in this course. Okay, so our answer here is CN. Okay, so that's our CN. That is our answer under the given cri uh, stopping criterion. So we have that the root is roughly 1.3125. Uh, and that's according to kind of the, just the, uh, the precision that was outlined in the question. So yeah, uh, another quick hint I did want to mention though is if you're given a function with a, uh, a sine or a cosine or something like that, make sure that you use radians for that, okay? So if the function has radians, uh, use that. So, uh, sorry, if the function has a trig function in it or something, use radians. Okay, so that's, uh, that's all. You know, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully that makes a little more sense to you now. I know this course can be a little bit abstract, but, you know, just memorize how to do this, and you should be good on the exam. Thanks for watching.